greetings Tom uh, <clears throat> you wanted a report and I finally got around to promising you one which has finally goaded me into doing it a goaded in a nice way nice way uh, as you are well aware, I always like to take a trip into the uh, Appalachian Mountains, deep into the Appalachian Mountains, <clears throat> every fall, uh, generally mid-September to maybe the first week of October is my preferred time. Uh, however, this year, uh, between uh, professional appointments that we had to keep and uh, getting a case of uh, oh yeah shingles that pretty much covered the right side of my f skull my side of my face down here uh, it uh, was not a joyous thing to have and uh, I hurt too much to uh, go on a camping trip until I've got that under control note I said under control not fully uh, cured yet, although I'm pretty close to there now. So anyhow, back to the trip. I finally got around to doing it about mid-October. And uh, I saw, according to the uh, weather report, that between here and if I just went to uh, the Skyline Drive, I could squeeze about four decent days of uh, ride out of uh, mid-October. So I packed up, loaded up, kissed the wife goodbye and took off for about three or four days. And I decided I'm just gonna haul ass get to the Skyline Drive. So I got to, uh, what's the name of that town with all the motels, uh, Front Royal. And uh, I decided, you know, I did about 400 miles today. I think it would behoove me to stay at a motel. So I stayed at a cheap motel. And when I checked the room, there weren't any bugs associated with the mattress. So I stayed there. And went to bed early and got up early and got rolling onto the Lewis Mountain Campground which is uh, the uh, campground on the blue uh, yeah, Skyline Drive about, about in the middle of the Skyline Drive about mile 57 something like that and uh, so it's a nice little uh, few services campground which means they don't have any great big lights like uh, you sent me pictures of to uh, destroy your night vision so you can see the night sky and so I got there about noon and made camp then uh, before I settled down to take my usual afternoon nap I gave my wife a call and let her know that things are going well that uh, I'm going to relax and maybe do a little riding afterwards on the sky, Skyline Drive uh, which I did I kind of cruised back up a ways on the uh, north end which I had come down but uh, I was a man on a mission when I came down and so uh, I headed out and enjoyed the scenery on the north end and uh, I found that the north end of the Skyline Drive is pretty much past its peak for fall foliage colors and all that. But mm, nice weather. Uh, the, the Skyline Drive had been repaved recently and nice smooth easy riding. I had a good time there. I came back early and had supper and visited with various people in the campground. Uh, got a lot of compliments on my uh, trailer more so than usual which su kind of surprised me but maybe it's because uh, this is the first time I've been out into a crowded campground with it 
Anyhow, uh, I uh, when I set up, I went and took a uh, really low cot with me. Uh, it folds up into something about this big round and about 18 inches long, 20 inches long. And uh, it's very comfortable, but I found out on this trip that it's uh, too painful to get into and out of because I have to get down on my hands and knees and then kind of roll into it and uh, then getting out I have to roll back out of it and I need a chair in the tent with me to have something to hang on to to help push me up easily and keep my balance so uh, I found out that uh, that wasn't the cot for me but I still had a couple more days to go and I could live with it because like I say it was comfortable to sleep on anyhow next day I take off and I head on down to the south end of the Skyline Drive and I chug along and just have a pretty good time and halfway to the end I uh, go off to uh, get a noon meal and uh, so I stopped off at a pizza hut had a small pepperoni pizza and got back on and headed on down to uh, Waynesboro which is the uh, southern terminus of the Skyline Drive and while I was there I got a tank of gas and got some stuff to make for supper headed on back to camp in a nice easy no rush drive uh, the south end of the drive was far enough south that the uh, foliage was in much better shape than the north end uh, it was a uh, it was a really nice ride so that's kind of finishes up day three uh, again I kind of the campground was crowded so there were it was not crowded but full so there were people around and like I say that trailer is a real attention getter and uh, one of the campers next to me <laughs> he had a real circus with him he had several kids uh, and looked like maybe some kids-in-law sons-in-law daughters-in-law there were about a half dozen people and the truck with and three tents on that site <laughs> And they were not quiet and organized about getting their act together. But they, uh, so they were kind of noisy about it, and I enjoyed watching them. And on my way to uh, the bear box to get my uh, supper stuff and cooking stuff, why, on the way back to my site, I went through his site and I said, that's quite a circus you have there. <laughs> he laughed and enjoyed that comment complimented me on my trailer and, and so I had supper and got cleaned up the food and the tabletop and all my gear and supplies put it in my grub box and took it to the bear box to uh, keep the bears from getting at it and uh, on the way back through I started visiting with this guy and he asked where I came from and I told him and he said did you ride that thing all the way here you know like I'm going to put all that trailer and scooter on a trailer I said yeah uh, his eyes got kind of big at that and I said yeah this is kind of a short trip usually I get as far south as uh, uh, Asheville North Carolina to visit my sister and beyond but not this year and he, he looked really surprised. He says, you just earned a man card there, buddy. And so I, we started talking about our motor. He has done motorcycle trips as well. Uh, he started talking about his trip to the uh, Sturgis Rally in South Dakota. And uh, I said, you know, I just told him, that's 
too far for this uh, machine. Uh, it, it works too hard to uh, go 90 mi 80, 90 miles an hour to cross the uh, flyover states, which is essentially Indiana, Illinois, uh, Kansas. No, that gets me to Colorado and most of North Dakota. So, but uh, he sure got a kick out of uh, me and my little my little scooter. And he says, "How fast can that go? Can you keep up with traffic?" And uh, I told him. Yeah, that's a maxi scooter. I'm able to keep up with 75 mile an hour traffic on the interstates, except on the steepest of grades. And uh, so, anyhow, I, I had a good time visiting with him. We had things in common. Oh, let's see. So, I settled down, fired up my tablet, and read and for a few hours. After, it was after dark. Read for a few hours, it got really dark, and I went outside and found some open sky and enjoyed seeing the sky as I saw it in uh, Medina County back when we were young, back in the uh, mid to late 50s. And uh, even so, it wasn't quite as good all the way to the horizon, but I could see the color, colors of the stars and all that good stuff. It was a nice little midnight walk that I had. And so I packed it in for the night, went to sleep in my oh so comfortable cot, and uh, woke up the next morning about 7, 7.30, and uh, when it's pretty chilly and with this bald head, I tend to uh, cuddle down and with my head down inside the sleeping bag. And, I stuck my head out and went brr. And eventually I worked myself up to saying this isn't getting me home. So I got up and saw how cold it was. And then I stepped outside and oh and I noticed the wind pretty good wind was blowing in the tent as well. Not in the tent but outside. Because I was in an oak grove and the wind really makes noise when it blows through the leaves of the oak trees. And uh, think of a real high-speed train without the horn. Uh, you know, that kind of a roar almost. So I got up, and stuck my head outside, and uh, it was a heavy mist, almost the lightest of drizzles. And I go, oh, no. And so I go to my scooter and I turn the ignition on because the scooter has a thermometer that displays the, uh, excuse me, displays the uh, outdoor temperature. And it said 40 degrees. And I went, brr. Up to the bear box, made some breakfast with, uh, I experimented with uh, oatmeal and grits. And the taste is oatmeal, the texture is grits, but it's a nice, <laughs> boy, it sure was a filling meal for a simple open the packets and boil it breakfast. And uh, the wind at this point uh, had picked up. So uh, there's a 15, 20 mile an hour wind coming up the side of the mountain and bringing a denser mist fog with it. And I'm getting kind of nervous because uh, being on the highway in a fog is not a happy uh, deal on a motorcycle. But I proceed to get things folded up put away, packed away in through their various bags and keepers. Then I took the uh, fly off the tent and of course it was sopping wet from this real heavy mist fog. And then I uh, took the tent ground down. And the thing is I have to take and fold the tent into quarters 
before I roll it up to make it so it can fit into its bag. And the wind is blowing so strong, uh, I spent a half hour playing Chase the Fabric until finally I got smart and uh, the picnic table that I was trying to roll the tent up on, I went and turned it so it was lengthwise to the wind <laughs> and uh, got things all rolled up and put away. And all packed away in the trailer and packed away inside the scooter and packed away inside the trunk and packed here and checked there and uh, put on another layer of clothing from what I had done around camp. Around camp I had just worn my uh, a pair of sweatpants and uh, a t-shirt underneath a sweatshirt. And uh, I put on a uh, nice puffy uh, Carhartt jacket that my son gave me last Christmas, son and daughter-in-law. And uh, put on the uh, traveling, my tr riding jacket over that. And packed up and got out of there in my usual hour and a half to two hours, which surprised me considering how much fighting I had to do because of the wind. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Such fun. Anyhow, at that point the, the uh, fog had uh, disappeared and the mist had mostly dissipated. So I uh, got up and got rolling. And told the GPS fastest route home and it asked me do you want it the fastest route is uh, has tolls on it do you want me to do it and I said yes and so I started for home with a uh, over a hundred miles of gas in my tank at that point and I had a good time getting home it was brisk but it warmed up a little bit into the mid 40s uh, by the time I got down off the mountain and into the valley and uh, the uh, humidity had dried up a little bit but it got a little drier so I started heading for home and this 15 20 not mile an hour wind is right in my face all the way home, either right in my face or coming at me at a 45 degree angle. At least that's what the vectors added it up to between it blowing and me rolling. And uh, that that little maxi scooter is amazing. Uh, the GPS gives me a true speed, more nearly true speed reading than my speedometer does. And it was able to maintain 75, 80 miles an hour against that headwind uh, with throttle left over for climbing the hills and such. Uh, just absolutely amazing what that little scooter thing will do. So anyhow, uh, the farther west I got, uh, the cold, the drier and colder the, colder the wind got. And when it got down to about 42 degrees again, I stopped and let's see, put two more layers <laughs> under my uh, jacket. So at that point, I had my uh, t-shirt, the uh, puffy jacket that I have, the uh, puffy vest. Did I mention the sweatshirt too? Anyhow, and my big fluffy hunting gloves and... Uh, at which point I was ready to go and uh, turn the heaters on the hand grips up to high. <laughs> oh, I love those hand those heaters on the hand grips. And uh, away I went. And uh, got on the Pennsylvania Turnpike and hey, the Pennsylvania Turnpike has joined the 21st century. Uh, you don't have to stop at the toll booths anymore and you don't need to do uh, the uh, whatever they call that pass, easy pass. Uh, it'll take a picture of your license plate when you get on and another picture when you get off and they'll send you a bill, presuming you go through the correct uh, toll booths, which I made sure to do. And I haven't received that bill yet. 
So I uh, switch, of course, led to Ohio. And Ohio is still back in the middle 20th century. I had to stop for a ticket and get rolling and stop at the toll booth and hand the ticket and money across when I got off the turnpike, at which point that put me uh, pretty close to my in-laws. But I'm chilled at this point and I'm wanting to get home. So 70, 75, uh, occasionally when I don't pay attention, 80. Uh, the wind has backed down a little bit, but the temperature has backed down with it. And then long about uh, Warren, no, not Warren, Talmadge, east side of Akron, it started to warm up again slightly. And uh, so that was up in the mid, mid 40s, upper mid 40s. And uh, I, you know, I, at that point, I was chilled. That extra three or four degrees didn't do me any much good. But anyhow, I got home. And uh, Pam hustled down the, uh, as much as she can hustle, down the stairs of the basement and unlocked the uh, basement door for me. And uh, I rolled into the basement, shut it down, shut the door, locked it, stopped and hugged and kissed the wife, and peeled off all my riding layers down to uh, the uh, blue jeans and uh, t-shirt. And upstairs I went. Uh, I took all the clothes that I had on off as I walked past the washing machine and put put them in there and started the washing machine. And uh, then I went in and took a hot shower. And I showered long enough that I uh, <laughs> that I ran the hot water the heater out of hot water. And uh, so I got dressed, went out, hugged and kissed the wife again now that I was uh, sweet smelling instead of four days of camping grunge and uh, had supper and I found out that I didn't quite have enough hot water because every once in a while I would look down and see my hands shaking <laughs> because I was cold but all part of the adventure Tom it's all part of the adventure and uh, makes a great story. I hope you enjoyed this story and I hope it met your expectations. Uh, I'll close now and go off and do some research on dealing with uh, IPTV cameras. Uh, let me know if they have USB or uh, RJ45 connectors or pr even better if they have uh, a uh, wireless network connections. Goodbye.